Okay. Uh, let's make sure everything right now is looking for you. Uh, you might not be able to hear any audio on my stream. That's because I'm streaming my desktop because I have like a pen that I can, so I'm gonna use. So you might not yeah. be able to hear the already audio, but as long as you can see, you're fine. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I'm just kind of wish that we had access to the uh, comms, like a recording of the comms. Yeah, yeah. So, um, first thing with Arisa that some players don't really uh, think of when you first like start a player is that Arisa can hold aggressive space really well because she can push people away who try to pressure so i mean mm -hmm. by that like if you're gonna play arisa here with the pharmacy the thing anything you want to do is to apply pressure to their front line so the pharmacy can like get behind them and damage them from behind so instead mm -hmm. of like kind of like going peeking right here like off and on and just trying to get poking which i yeah. like the way you're kind of like doing that where you're just kind of like peeking in out of, out of cover if you play this do the same thing like right here um and just mm -hmm. poke in and out out of cover save your javelin and stuff like that What's going to happen yeah. is you're going to apply a lot more pressure because Larissa has a, a big fall off range. So you're probably mm -hmm. doing less damage. So you're applying the same amount of pressure. I mean, the same amount of, uh, you're applying more damage with more pressure. And what happens is if one of them walks at you, you have the tools to keep them away. You have three right. abilities that can keep them away. You have your fortify that can help you with, uh, you know, bo boops and stuff. You have the javelin to push them away and you have the, um, the javelin spin to either turn around and run away with it or you can push them away while backing up mm -hmm. so you have three tools to kind of like push them away when you're when you're applying pressure and when you do that is if you're standing right here um the players like the sim or the hanzo are less inclined to turn around and shoot the farah because you're kind of kind of in their immediate light of sight especially in like ranks like this it'll it'll become less and less as you go up but right now Players in these kind of ranks will only shoot the character that get, they can really see the most. So if you're yeah. kind of playing up here, you're taking damage to your team and taking attention away, which is also what you want. Like, you don't want them shooting at the Fara. You don't want them shooting at Frostfire here, who's trying mm -hmm. to get an off angle kind of on, on Junkrat spam. You want to be, like, right here, just kind of prying pressure. You know, maybe you can javelin the Hanzo into the wall for a second if you think that they're not going to run at you. And, and continue to apply pressure, and that's gonna allow the DPS to kind of get way more value, and, and yourself mm -hmm. is gonna get more value. Right. So. So kind of almost acting like a distraction for yeah, the enemy absolutely. teams, so they can focus yeah. you. Yeah. Is that that the, the Rissa is one of the fewer tanks where you like relish when they shoot you, like you like you want them to shoot you every second of the game, mm -hmm. basically. I like your aggression though, once you somebody called to go in. Yeah, that was something that we worked on towards the end of the scrim was kind of being more communicative when to actually push. Because also my thing is I'll kind of push in thinking that I have people behind me, but then that won't be the case. So kind of towards the end of it, it was just kind of like let's confirm um that we're actually going in together. So Yeah, something something that I do to check to make sure I do like two other one of two things. If mm -hmm. I like you know, if I'm if I'm a new player with a new team, I'll kind of like ask, "Are we ready to push in? Can we push in?" And and yeah. maybe maybe Bean will say, uh, "Yeah, you know, I can walk with you." Or maybe uh, who's usually is Nusso usually on the team DPS or yeah, oh yeah, he's right yeah, there. DPS or support. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, so maybe Nusso will be like, "Yeah, I'm ready for you guys to walk in if they're playing far here, or if you guys are playing like a more brawl comp where you're playing together, uh, it'll be easier for someone to say, "Yeah, we can go in." Um, but most of the time, if you're a tank player, um, if you like, what I'll do is I'll just turn around for a second and see if people are with me. And then once mm -hmm. I see that they are with me, I want to choose to take that aggression or play where I want to play mm -hmm. and the team to play around me because I'm enabling them with my abilities and my presence when they're shooting me. So I want right. to turn around and be like, okay, everyone's here. If I'm playing, say I'm playing Ryan on this map. Everyone's all right. Turn around. My BAP's behind me. You know, maybe my May, if they're playing May, uh, is behind me. All right. I want to take aggression. So I'm going to say, all right, I'm walking up into the point. 
and I'm going to go for, say, Symmetra. Say Symmetra is right here. Yeah, you guys are playing Ryan. I want to go for Symmetra. So then everyone mm-hmm. will start for shoot Symmetra. I'm going to say, Symmetra, shoot, everyone shoot Symmetra. And hopefully people are listening and, they, and, they'll, and they'll kill that. And then you go to the next target. Um, mm-hmm. As Arissa, what you probably want to do is you want to say, all right, I'm going to take some space here. So you're, you're taking up space. And then you say, um, like, now so I'm going to go for, you know, I'm going to javelin at Symmetra. Can you try to direct her or something like that? Or let me know if you direct someone and I'll try to javelin them. You know, try yeah. to combo that. Um, but... Yeah, each tank has like a different kind of like way they want to play. Um, I mean, there's different kind of play styles within each tank. It gets really complicated, but there's like a set one that you want to do. Another thing, as Arissa, I was noticing is that <clears throat> she's very powerful if you're using her cooldowns correctly, but she mm-hmm. you are a sitting duck if you don't. So right. the the consensus of Arissa is like you want to use you know the first thing you want to do. If you're, you know, say someone's on an off angle like this by themselves, if you want to use your abilities correctly to to kill them, I would say you want to first, uh, you don't have to use fortify because you know that she can't boop you away. So you don't right. have to fortify yourself and use javelin spin. You can just javelin spin. So what I'll do is I'll javelin spin into them, push them towards this wall, and then I'll javelin them into the wall and then shoot them in the head because you'll get you get really good. Uh, you can right. get really good shots on them when they're javelin to the wall. So, if you see what what happens here, if I go to the correct one, so if we go back a couple seconds, um, like ten instead of. So you get a good pick on Hanzo. So you guys got uh, you know, Nessa was getting really good value with the Farah. You get mm-hmm. even more if you were up here, um, and then. You kind of notice that the sim is by herself, so that was a good that was a good call. So you fortify and then you javelin spin, which whatever. If if you get the kill, it's okay. If you waste one of the abilities, mm-hmm. but what happens is you cancel the javelin spin early to try to get a javelin off. So you cancel it early, uh, okay. and you kind of like mess yourself up because the momentum of the smetra stops prematurely. So then you don't know where to shoot throw the throw the um. The javelin. So if you wait for yeah. it to end, it'll always be the same amount of time. So you'll always know, you know, when it, it pretty soon it'll become muscle memory when you throw your javelin. Yeah. I wonder if that's left over from my habits of playing ball, where with ball you're kind of canceling in and out of your movements, like with the stomps and stuff. But uh, maybe, mm. maybe. I mean, uh, I a lot of times it, it happens because either you're like trying really hard. To, to kill them because you're nervous or something like that. Like something that sometimes that happens with me mm-hmm, for sure. or anybody where you're like, okay, I had to kill this guy. So I'm going to use all my booties at once to try to just kill him as fast as possible. But mm-hmm. if you mess him up, he gets the, he had, he has the ability to maybe escape, especially if it's like a, um, a mobile character, like say like, even if it's like junk rat with his, you know, mines, he can mine away from you or, or maybe a tracer. If you're trying to kill a tracer, uh, or a soldier, so now you see how you're kind of like you cancel that again and then you're kind of sitting duck just in the middle getting shot by the baptiste yeah oh my god that's just kind of like sitting there yeah probably should have got out oh hank's on mercy i just noticed that all right let's see there we go so up the bat. No. Okay. Okay, playing a little bit more on the objective. Yeah. Yes. Something like as well. I, I, you know, obviously we can't hear what the calls are. If Nuss yeah. is going for a barrage, um, either, either he called that he was going for a barrage and like no one responded or nobody reacted to it, or like he just didn't say anything. So yeah. like, if he's gonna go for a barrage, let's see where he goes for it, just so you know like how to. Okay, yeah, he's kind of yeah. Justice, that was that was very that was very obvious that he was going for a barrage. He kind mm-hmm. of went up here, and then he went like that with his thing. It was very obvious yeah. he was going for a barrage. 
Um, if he's going to call for a barrage or an alt combo like that, that like puts him in a position to where he can die really easily, like something like that, or it's similar to like, it's kind of in the same realm as like a tire using rip tire where like, if you're yeah. going to use rip tire, you're not going to like stand right here and just rip tire because your body's right there. So you're stationary. So your body can die. You know, you want to go in the corner right here to use rip tire so you can keep your body safe. When you want right. to use barrage, you want to go into a position where you can kind of keep your body safe. So, like, instead of going like that head on to them, like, especially on this map, like, you have the ability to go around like this. And then you say, if Nusso's like, I want to go for barrage, and then your reaction is, okay, he wants to go for barrage. I'm going to go aggressive, like, this way. I'm going to go aggressive right here. I'm going to mm -hmm. use my fortify, and I'm going to shove and spin towards them. They're all going to start panicking and shooting at me. And then right when you start doing that, uh, Kendall's going to be behind right here for like a three-man barrage kill so you kind of combo that it's a it's a concept known as pinching where you kind of like have yeah. someone go on a different angle and you like um you basically just like you know pinch them together so right like you go here they go here and you like pinch them into one into one area where they kind of can't really react to both angles at the same time so you kind of just like melt them from two angles yeah um so comboing stuff like that instead of just kind of like you know, I know this is yours, but like Kendall, just like going in here and doing that, it'll make it easier for you and your team to like try to combo that instead of just trying to kill somebody with it. Cause you, I mean, you get, you get a pick, but you give your life up. So how, right. how, how good is it really? Right. And the trades is really something you only want to do as a last resort. Yeah. You don't want to trade yeah. when you're trying to take point. So. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can also waste the javelin less on the uh, on the shields and stuff as well. Because uh, I think I have yeah. it like, in my brain where I'm trying to like get extra damage on it, but that's really not the point of it's javelin. Not the point. Yeah, at all. Yeah. It's very similar to um, say a lot of players do it with Sigma Rock, um, where they kind of just throw it out on cooldown. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's mainly main use is you should hold it all the time to like stop someone who's flanking or like to stop an ability or something like that. Yeah. Um, so instead of doing that, like, R Arissa kind of like counters Ryan if you use your abilities correctly. But like, if he's just holding his shield, you're not gonna break his shield with your with your abilities or your damage. Yeah. You have to apply pressure to him. So like, like I said, like say Far is behind right now, and they're kind of huddled in this corner. You can walk up, and um, you know, just start shooting him, and then maybe you can like push him into the wall and just pressure him. Like if you're, even if you're doing like five damage to him, if you're mm -hmm. just walking up and just javelin spinning him into the wall, he's, he's going to react in some way, whether that's charge, maybe he, um, you know, tries to walk by you. Maybe he even shatters at some, like to try to like stop you from doing that. Um, mm -hmm. once you put, apply pressure to him, like then you can be like, okay, if he goes for a charge maybe you can try to react in time and go for a, uh, fortify and stop his charge and then you can javelin him into the wall so like that kind of like uh ability cycle instead of kind of like you know using all three of your abilities to try to break his shield um he's getting value because he's using his shield to stop your abilities so like you think you're breaking it but this but in reality he's just shielding off your poor, important abilities if the shield yeah. breaks i mean he's a little vulnerable but he did his job where he kind of protected his team from your abilities yeah, and he's got both supports alive there anyway. Yeah, he's so he's got both supports. He's got he's got a Lucio beat. He's got Bap lamp. So he's got a lot to work with here. Hey, did you just call the res thing a lamp? Uh, this thing? Yeah, this is what it's yeah. called. Yeah, it's called lamp. Okay. People call it's it lamp. lamp. Um, that's usually the call out, like shoot lamp or shoot immortality. Something, you know. Here, um, I like how you were, ch how you like, even though you didn't like get, you didn't execute what you wanted, you noticed that the chunk was in trouble, and you tried to stun him away to try to help him. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, I would just, um, where's the far? Yeah, like so, like say in the scenario where we have this new scenario where the far is behind. Um, as soon as the far says like I'm in position, like she's out here, maybe she's right here, just like shooting from like this little high ground right here. Mm -hmm. That's when you walk in. Because then this guy doesn't walk in first and die. Um, if you're walking up here, like you have a BAP shooting you. 
and they have, you know, Symmetra, who's dead right now. So you're not going to, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. Yeah. Um, you have three abilities that can stop them from killing you. You have a Fortify, which literally is like the best defense ability in the game. You have, you know, Bap shooting you constantly. Like the Rhine with the shield up and like the Kree is not going to kill you. Mm. Um, and if he does shoot at you, that gives the Barfara so much, you know, value. So that's when you want to you know, start walking up on them and, uh, and pressure them. <laughs> They use a bunch of ults here, so it's just hard to um, to break through. Even though you used one, they used three. So yeah. most of the time, if you use more than two, it's, um... I mean, if you're you know, using them correctly, you're going to win. <clears throat> Ready or okay. Five, four. Okay, we do Three, run Ryan comp here. Two, this is this is good. One, yeah, Ryan's seven, definitely not my strong suit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all the other tanks. Um, right, I think I like they even wanted me to try playing Zarya. I'm like, bro, I literally don't know how to play Zarya. <clears throat> Ryan uh, is like so a good time. Ryan is like the most forgiving tank. Like if mm -hmm. you lack the game sense or mechanical skill, like if you're early and you're you know you're Overwatch whatever, you're new, because yeah. he just he just does damage. And you can just get aggressive, and that's his play style, and it's hard to get punished if you have good yeah. players around you. Um, so I would say that I like the comp. I think the Ana might be a little um, too little healing because most cases on this map, you're going to play characters that have a lot of splash damage, like Junk. Um, yeah. May can shoot through multiple people. Symmetra does a lot of damage. So a Baptiste is really good on this map because he can kind of like you're all brawling up here. So if you play up here, he can just shoot every single person at once, and and, mm -hmm. and, and he doesn't have somewhere to worry about, you know. All right, I shoot this target. I shoot this target, and he also like does more healing per second than Anna does. I if, I think yeah. I think. So um, it's kind of like having characters like on a brawl um, comp is more yeah. for the area of effect, area of damage. Yeah, where for dive, it's kind of very specific. Yeah, yep. sort of one yep. at and, a time. And, and even though the nano is really good for Reinhardt, um, <clears throat> all the other abilities that Bap has is better for Reinhardt in the long run because you're getting more value out of everything. Like you're getting value off of his hill burst, and you're getting more value off of his heals in general. And mm -hmm. you can window fire strike with the uh, with the window, um, and you can you know go aggressive with his immortality uh, ability. So uh, most of the time, you're gonna get more value. So I, I like this. I like the the May Sim here though. So let's see how it works. I, I also, I, although I think if Frostfire is a Junkrat player, he should just play Junkrat here. Even though they do play Zarya. Um, if you're playing Zarya against a Rhine, if you have a Junkrat, I mean the Junkrat's gonna charge the Zarya, but you guys have like a really good rush, so you can mm -hmm. just kind of ignore it and just go in. Um, all right, let's see. Is Rush a separate comp from Brawl and Dive, would you say? Um, no, Brawl, R Brawl and Rush are kind of the same same thing, I'd say. Um, there's different variants of everything. There's like, uh, you know, the Ryan Rush. There's a, there's a Ram Rush. There's a Junker Queen Rush. There's a Monkey Rush. Um, there's like a bunch of different things. But no, Rush and Brawl are kind of like the same thing. Rush and Brawl are kind of like in tandem where like Brawl means you want to play together and Brawl the enemy team. You don't want to like you know, get an off angle. You just kind of want to head first into their team. Rush is the same concept where you just want to go fast. So, like, mm -hmm. you can play... You could play a kind of a Rush-style monkey comp where you have, like, a monkey, but, like, a tracer. So, like, a tracer will flank. So you're not necessarily brawling them, but you're going fast. So you're going, like, a... Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a Rush comp. But most of the time, if you're playing a, raw, a brawl, it's a Rush. You know what I mean? It's like it's like a... It's kind of like a rectangle is a... Like, a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle yeah, is in a square. Sure. Where like a rush is a brawl, but a brawl is I mean a, a brawl is a rush, but a rush isn't always necessarily a brawl. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. 
I do want to go back a couple seconds and see how you guys TP here. Two, one, round two. Capture the objective. Okay. Okay, yeah, a couple players were late. Um, that's This is really, really important, like, on this map. Something that you can call in, like, the next scrim to, like, make sure to remind people, because I do this mm -hmm. all the time. Um, if you're on this map, you have to be ready to take this TP, and you have to be ready to take it quick. Yeah, I remember you, yesterday there was yeah. a delay on that. If, if you miss it and yet. they're here first, you basically lose the fight. Mm -hmm. um, because you'll have to either go into the already set up brawl, or you'll have to go point. And have to like take a huge amount of space when they have all the spam. Um, so I would say, I mean, you have to go for the TP early. Once you take the TP, uh, the main support, whoever's playing Luzio, just has to know and has to believe that everyone took the TP at the same time. Like you just have to mm -hmm. know that, and you have to just speed right away and go here. Um, because we don't, we can't have people lagging behind. Like I think two people were late. So and then he speeded right now. Like, they're already here. They're already set up. And you guys, only one person is here. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> yeah. You think it would have been better to play the corner more there? And just kind of not use the, Jesus uh, Christ, the what shield? The fuck? Oh, pfft. Overwatch is not is crashing. Over what? All right, Overwatch has crashed. All right, gotta reload. Uh, all right, to answer your question though, um, I would say no. Um, the pro I would say like it's different from depending on how you play. I would say every scenario there, you kind of want to go up and kind of maybe you can use the um, like those little pl like those little walls, like the server walls, like uh, in mm -hmm. the middle thing, if you want a little bit of of uh, natural cover. But most of the time. Like, it'll it'll come like w like in time of like um, recognizing comps, but most of the time, like when you see a comp, you automatically know how to play against it. Like that that you know I, I've been playing it for years, so like every time I see a comp, I automatically know where to go, what to do, and how to do it. So like mm -hmm. when you play that, especially against a Zarya, which can't really work, she can't really like brawl you because. She, you know, you, you, you apply so much pressure to her. As soon as your bubbles are gone, you just walk off right over her. In yeah. Every scenario. So if we went back to this uh, real quick, um, I would say because they also have a sim and they don't have any, they don't have any like aggression, punishing players, aggression, 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 punishing heroes, like, a, like a May, mm -hmm. um, or a Junkrat then you can kind of just walk right into them because you don't want that sim to charge up. Um, you don't want sim to get uh, her level 3 beam because then they have a lot of damage on you. Instead, I end up taking this point here. Oh, you kind of... Okay, you kind of just missed it. It's all right. So, here, as soon as you see... Okay, they're running Zarya. What are you? What I what I want you to do is just walk up and take a swing at this sim, and then shield up, right? Get heals and mm -hmm. take damage. Take another swing, shield up, you know, kind of like do like a little pattern. Shield up, swing, shield up, swing, and then um, Nusso should tell you when they have the high beam. Like it's like they'll know because they can hear it. Um, as soon as they say that, then you go super hard in here. And don't worry about these. This is not your job to kill them. It's it's one of the DPS's job to kill them. Mm -hmm. So, um, you just kind of like walk in, go for the sim first. Do not let her charge up. If everyone's shooting the same target you're calling, she'll die pretty easily. Um, and yeah, you'll kind of, you know, you'll rush into them. You'll, you'll rush. Cause like what Zarya wants is she wants you to kind of play passive, throw your fire strikes out so she can get good bubble value and then out damage you from like mid range because she has more range than you do, obviously. Mm -hmm. So she wants you to you want your shield to get broken so she can out damage you from mid range while you're trying to walk into her. But if you go fast, she might get some charge early, but you're already in her team to where she can't really get that mid range value. So you're already right. kind of like you know, you're already just killing her whole, whole her whole back line. So would you say kind of and this is probably a really big generalization, do you think like 
once you're once once you know the enemy tank has lost most of their like tanking ability, like maybe like they'll recently lose their cert, their fortifier or their signal loses their shit. Do you think it makes sense at that point to start kind of diving onto one of Absolutely. their more squishy targets? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I would say so like yeah, definitely. Especially against Arissa. Like some tanks are easily punishable. Um and you can focus them, like maybe like Ryan. Uh, if he loses all his shield or something like that, you can maybe punish him. Someone like Arissa, you absolutely don't want to go for her first. Uh -huh. um, I would never even shoot her at all unless she's like, she just completely wastes all her abilities and she's in the middle of nowhere. But like, if her team's behind her, you just have to walk right by her. That's like, because she will she will stall you out for as way longer than you want. Yeah. One of your their DPS will kill you. But yeah, absolutely. If you if you notice that a, a tank has used their abilities, that's your time to go in, especially Zarya. If you notice that Zarya has used her abilities, you can walk right past the Zarya. She has no bubbles for her team. And what it does is it does two things. First, it pressures their backline so you can get a kill, and it also separates their tank from their backline. So mm -hmm. maybe their Baptiste is going to shoot you instead of heal her, and your Symmetra can burn her while you while yeah. you focus her their backline, you know? So you kind of like just separate them. So absolutely, right. that's exa exactly right. Okay. But, yeah. I would say, yeah, you definitely want to get a little bit more aggressive, apply a little bit more pressure. Mm -hmm. um, even Because you know how, you see how, um, like if you look at the top here, um, you have significantly less ult charge than like everyone else in the, in the map by like 20% yeah. at least. So it means that, you know, you know, you took the point, but like Bean's 80 to Nano, which is probably the one that's going to charge the fastest. I mean, the lowest on your team is 30 other than you. And then like the lowest on their team is 29. So you want to be at least right now, you want to be ideally at, at least like 50, like at this point in the map because of how easily it is to charge shatter because of the, you know, the fire strikes can hit multiple targets. Your swings can hit multiple targets. So you should be at least 50 at this point. Mm-hmm. So yeah, walk up here. Yeah, take take a pick a couple swings. I know they have a lot of damage right now. Yeah, I think definitely one of the biggest things I'm first to talk about is just like the having the more game awareness. I think this, I think I'll talk about it with Jaden at the end of the screen yesterday, where it's like all kind of tunnel vision a little bit, mm -hmm. even if it's in the right position or not. Yeah, and and and, yeah. and 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 you're like, if we just take a second and see like Bean, make sure she's healing you. I would say that even if she is healing you, you're getting less value off the healing. Mm -hmm. Let's see. You're trying to go aggressive here for a second. Get low, then you have to back up. She, yeah, okay, so now she's healing you. Yeah, so like what that was was that was only a miscommunication. So mm -hmm. she wasn't ready to like heal you for your aggression. So you kind of walked up a little bit, you took a little bit of a swing, but she was kind of over here, not ready to heal you. So like I would say like Bap would be just way better because she's playing behind you. And if you go for aggression, she's already in front of, right behind you, ready to heal you. And she can also shoot them and lamp you right here. Mm -hmm. um, because what happens is you kind of just like sit here and, and take all your, and your shield just dies. Like that's, this is exactly what I was talking about with this, um, this mid range stuff. That's it right now. Yeah. See how you're got, you see how you're at a certain distance away where Hugh can't hit her and she's just mm -hmm. damaging you. It's exactly what she wants. So that's how she wins that fight. So like instead, and if how you win this fight is like if you see that like like I would say you definitely notice that there's people behind this thing. I would I would be surprised if you didn't. Um that's it. Yeah, like if you see them go right there, immediately say like can we speed in? Maybe is Frost I have a wall? Yeah, so he what Frostfire can do is uh, separate the McCree with this with a wall right here, and then you guys just speed in on this back line and just destroy them. Mm -hmm. Especially since Zarya's anti right now, so you have to you know go for a, an aggressive play 
and, and play and brawl together, right? Instead of just kind of standing and, and poking, because that's what your guys are doing right now. Where you're standing and poking and hoping that Frostheart kills someone or Symmetra kills someone. Um, so yeah, is just wall right here, you know, go into this bat, go in right here, just brawl them, swing at them. You'll probably kill somebody, uh, with your swings. Um, and then you win the fight off of that. You'll get a bunch of damn, a bunch of ult charge because you're still, mm -hmm. like you said, you're still at 13. And everyone else is very much ahead. I do like you did, you did, you did kind of do that a second there, but then you lost track of who you were shooting. So, it, it, I mean, it's, it happens. Yeah, that, that's 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 the uh, it's kind of like the welcome to Overwatch moment, where like. Yeah. Even even if you have nano, you're not un, you're not immortal. A lot of players think they are when they have uh, when they have nano, so they'll go right in like that. Instead, I would just say, instead of locking yourself in that position, just walk up, ask for speed, maybe swing at somebody. They risk a swap. Is Arisa the comfort pick, or is that? Uh, actually, ball ball is probably my strongest tank, but it's just this map is. Well, I think this map is okay for ball, but um, no, Reese is definitely probably second in that regard. I think it's less so because I'm just so used to having like movement type characters that when I'm playing Ryan, I try to. And Jaden pointed this out that I play in the mindset of ball through other characters, if that makes sense. So it's kind of like I'm trying to go for like as aggressive pushing as much as I can, but then I'm like mentally, I'm like, oh no, no, I have to. Uh, either wait or kind of try to keep track of my team. So yeah, I would say Arisa is definitely the bad pick into this because they just have so much like sustained, like high damage. Like Zarya and Symmetra are just gonna do high damage to you through all your mm -hmm. abilities, no matter what. They're gonna do it through your da javelin spin. Your javelin spin won't really block much. Um, your fortify, though you have you know double damage resistance. High charge beam, Smetra and Zarya will still melt you through it most of the time. Um, so yeah, I would probably say if you had, if you wanted to swap off Ryan, uh, I think Monkey would be a fine pick into this. Um, I mean, Ball would be fine. I, I, I think they don't really have any slows except for the turrets. So you could, you could roll through them a couple times, maybe get a slam off the high ground right here. Um, yeah, Riss is definitely something you struggle on in this, against this comp. Rissa in general is, isn't very good right now. Mm -hmm. There's kind of, you know, the meta. There's like the meta tanks. Chaos will not be unseated in a day. You know, also I think Henry pointed out if you're playing tank, you have to get good at playing all the tanks. We will crush them. I mean, yeah. You don't have to. I mean, they're, they're, you can have a you can have a hero pool. Uh, if you're the only tank, I'd say you at least want to get solid at all of them, for sure. Yeah, this is this is so slow. This is fine because yeah, we're yeah. seeing you on a multiple tanks here, so this is like we're getting the most value possible. So Zarya bubble usage, um, you can use it in two different ways. You can use it selfishly, where you use it by yourself to get aggressive and get charge, hmm. or you use it in you know teammate oriented ways, where you use them to set up teammates or save them. Um, but what you did there was you kind of combine the two, where you used it on Hank to just get charge. Um, and it, it didn't really work out here where like, see how he's kind of like, you see if you look at a, a different angle, like a, a three, uh, third person angle, you see how you kind of just use it when he's full health. Just, it, it looks, it looks like at least that you're trying to use it to just get charge. That, I mean, that's what it looks like from, uh, you know, a, a pers uh, perspective, a different perspective. But you use them, you use them quite early, so then you're coming in with no bubbles, you know. Mm -hmm. So managing your bubbles correctly. If you want to use one for yourself and one for your teammate, if you want to use both for your teammates, if you want to use both for yourself. That's it's completely up to preference. They all work. I'd say probably the 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 worst one is using both for your teammates because you want to at least keep one for yourself, uh, in case you get, you know, pressured out. Yeah. But Go. 
Yeah, I think at that point that was just kind of a panic pick, I think. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I can totally tell that you're just new to the character, and that this is, this is what every new character player does, what every new character does. So I would say probably from that one fight that I got at the end is don't be afraid to use more um, of your secondary fire, especially like um, against a squishy. So like if you're going to use your secondary fire, I would probably like if you're high charge, so say I'm Zarya right now, if you want to use your secondary fire, throw it at the ground where they are because it's very much easier to hit them than if you're throwing it right at them. Mm -hmm. So like throw it at the ground, it'll like... It'll it'll damage them a lot. They'll get knocked back a little bit, so it's gonna help with the uh, throw off their aim, and then you can gotta finish them off with a with a um with primary fire. But let's see on this map what do we do here. Yeah, I think this this one this round turned out a lot better. Okay. Round okay, we're playing against Diva as Drunk Queen, which is good. That's a good matchup for you. I mean, you're getting good value off of your abilities there. So I would say the first thing is Jerker Queen is that uh, it's very unforgiving to kind of play slow because you have mm -hmm. literally nothing to help you if you get if you are like in open space and uh, you don't want to use your rush to save yourself. That's a, it's a complete waste of the ability because the rush is more to enable your teammates than it is to enable yourself. So what the rush does, in case you don't know, is it gives you a heal boost. Gives you everyone a health boost around you. It gives everyone around you a speed boost. Um, so you want to use that if you think about it to get together and rush into them. Right. Um, so you don't want to like play really open space, like maybe like right here, and just kind of poke and then use it for yourself. Uh, you want mm -hmm. to diagnose like where they're playing. Say if someone's like right here. All right, I want to rush into them. You literally just rush into them, like use your abilities and then leave. Um. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so with Dark Queen, her you're getting some good value off her knife. So obviously the knife, you throw it out. It's like a hog hook. It's harder to hit. Throw it in, you pull them in. Uh, usually the combo is to go for... Um, you, you pull them in with your knife. If you get a knife, you pull them in. And then you go for your axe immediately. Mm -hmm. Because what that does is it gives you a lot of... Uh, it gives them bleed and it gives you a lot of health boost because you get health off your bleed damage. Right. Uh, and one thing as well, when you're playing against... A brawl team, which they're kind of like, they're kind of playing it kind of where they're playing. They don't have any dive characters, so they're playing kind of a semi poke kind of brawl thing. They're not really playing a, a good comp, so it's hard to diagnose mm -hmm. what they're playing. Is that um, every every character that you hit with her axe reduces the cooldown by two seconds. So if you hit one person, the cooldown will be reduced by two seconds. If you hit two, it's going to reduce by four seconds. If you hit the whole team, all five of them, you just get it back immediately. Is that the cooldown for the axe itself? The axe itself. Here, I'll show you. We can watch uh, the fight back, and I'll show you. And 
that was a fine that, that play right there where you kind of just threw the knife into a horde of people isn't actually a bad play I, I, I I'm not I'm not like a lot of people will think all right I have to get this sick lineup on it so I can hit somebody with it Mm -hmm. Just throw it into their team, and you'll probably hit someone at some point. Yeah, that's something I was trying to do yesterday, where I'm trying to, like, throw it over the team almost to get as much, yeah. like, distance possible, so then I can have some leeway. And the distance doesn't really matter. It's just you want to hit somebody with it. Yeah. Um. Also, they'll go the same distance no matter how far away they are. Um. Mm -hmm. So if you're, like, 50 feet away, if you're here and they're here, they're not going to come all the way to you. They're going to go the same distance no matter what. So it doesn't matter how far you throw it. Mm -hmm. As long as you so hit someone with back. it. Yeah. Same distance. That was good there. You kind of pushed the diva. Even if even there, like she went three feet, but that's bad for her. That puts you into axe range. So you hit you hit two people with that axe. So you see what happens to the cooldown. See mm -hmm. how it's halfway done. It's usually an eight second cooldown. You hit the Lucio and you hit the diva with it. Now it's a four second. Or you hit the the diva and the sim with it. So now it's a two four, four second cooldown. Mm -hmm. You hit her with it, now it's a six second cooldown because you only hit one person. Mm -hmm. So that's so getting that is people kind of underrate that. That's so powerful. So what I'll usually do is I'll save the knife in most scenarios. If I'm going against a team like this, I'll save the knife and I'll just rush in with our team. I'll use rush. It's called shout, but I mean, whatever you can call it, rush. Usually, that's the call out for it. Um, mm -hmm. You shout in, and you axe everyone, and hopefully get a low cooldown on it. Then you just axe them again and shoot them, axe them again, and then if someone's trying to leave, that's when you use your knife. Mm -hmm. Right to kind of keep them, keep them in the fight if they're trying to leave. That's mm -hmm. usually how I do it. Uh, I mean, it can be used in a different way. If you are confident that you're going to be able to get value off of it by just throwing it out poke wise, go for it. You can easily get a you can easily punish someone that's on an off angle by using it. Um, especially someone like Cree, like say Cree is like over here on this off angle, like shooting right here. You hit him with a knife and pull him in, he's probably dead. Nothing you can do about it. So that's mm -hmm. totally fine as well. But mostly in a brawl scenario, I would use it to to put, to pull them back in. Great aggression. I like the way you use that. Um, keep in mind that like the axe is kind of the opposite of like Arisa Javelin and Sig Rock, where you just want to use it as soon as you get it on somebody every single time. Mm -hmm. If you you want to use it as soon as you get it on somebody, so watch the cooldown. Try to watch the cooldown. Try to listen for it to come back. Maybe you can keep it in the corner of your eye that it comes back. Good. That was a good knife. Perfect. And you. You were able to, you know, change. You were able to, like, you see what you do here is you diagnose that the pre is dead. So, mm -hmm. like, whether or not that's intentional or not, you at least had the game sense to turn and try to hit somebody else with it. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Because without that, Lucio might not die. That was a great pick. Oh, is this? Is this just a corrupted code? Because it's broken mm -hmm. now again. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. The code's broken. Oh wait, is it? All right, let's try again. Let me just get past it, baby. Let's see if you can get past it. Oh, okay, never mind. That's fixed. That's weird. It beats my yeah. Wi-Fi. Yeah. You're getting a lot of value off of your off of your abilities and. You can you can tell that you're still trying to get the hang of how they work, so that's really mm -hmm. good. That's a really good sign for you. <laughs> if the ghost tried to change the angle, that's, the that's angle totally fine. Come that's back. totally fine. Because what you're doing is you're just getting ult charge from that, and they're just standing there. Oh, they TP'd. Yep. Yeah, this I'm actually curious to see what your thoughts are. Let's see. Cause I think I use my ult here in a second. Oh, this was funny. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh, curious. How the fuck does the Mercy Farah die to Symmetra turrets? Oh, I see. 
He's all the way in the back. We went over this uh, in the first map, Kendall. But yeah. When you want to go for a barrage, you can't. You your barrages are too obvious. Yeah. Um, especially when they have a diva, because she's gonna eat yeah. everything. So what you want to do, uh, it's different between every other tank and diva. So against diva, you're banking on getting one kill here probably before she starts yeah. DMing you. So you want to like flank around, just hide right here, try to kill his Zen with it, because you want to you want to. Ideally, try to live after. So if you do that, yeah, you're, not gonna you're, not, you're not going to live. You're not going to live if you do that in most scenarios. And against... Um, we can actually... Can we just go there right now? Hold on. I don't think you can. Watch Maybe this. Can. Watch this. There's, there's that one. Oh. Is it all the way at the top? Uh -huh. Yeah. For the last one. I was trying to I was trying to look at the VOD earlier today before I hopped on. I was like, wait a second, where the hell are these other sections of the maps? And I just see the icons like in the middle of nowhere. Isn't it at the top? No? Am I wrong? Might be on the other side of the building. Be on the other or... side. Ooh, this looks like it could be it. Is it? Where the fuck no. is I'm curious. Okay, so there's there's garden, right? Yeah. There's control center. There's one. Is it all the way at the top? I'm pretty sure it's all the way at the top. No, I feel... Oh, it, it go looks, go it looks more, too small. Go more on the other side of the building. Like, go farther. Oh, maybe just has a that, one way. Right, so there's control center. In the middle. It has to be close. I mean, it can't be... Oh, is that it right there? There it is. That, yeah, there it is right there. there. Yeah. Hold on. I just have a... I'll do a little shortcut. Ready? There we go way okay i just wanted to tell you real quick down mm -hmm. here yeah okay wow it that's, that's crazy out. how close it is um so when you're playing far on this map it's a very good far map but a lot of times yeah. you were kind of like poking through here or um when you ulted you like you hit this off the wall with your concussion and just ulted like this yeah uh so uh sam was playing arissa so in that case you want to just go behind like you were before and just poke, and um, Sam is gonna do is gonna go in up here when you do that and try to take the damage for you while you poke, and then you want to get a flank alt every time. Like you want to just flank alt. You don't want to. Yeah. You don't want to choreograph. I don't want to send it down main. Yeah. Sending it down main is the worst option. Yeah. Is exactly what happened here is you did that on this map, and you got killed by you and Mercy got killed by Symmetra Thirds. And and something something you'll you'll learn with time, um, Sam is that um, sound cues. So like immediately, if I'm not looking at anything and I hear, so if I'm gonna I'm gonna when they when they high noon here, if I'm playing this, I can't see him. I as soon as I hear that, I immediately know he's right here. I, I'm yeah. immediately because of the sound cue. Because it's to my right, and he's not right here, so it, he has to be over here, mm -hmm. or maybe like right here. But he's probably not right there. Because if he was, if he was like right here, you'd hear it behind you. So right, because you have to have him. line of sight on everybody. Yeah. So you, that. so your headphones are are your are your help for, helper here, where you notice that he's right there. Um, when that happens, what what I would do is, um, just run in here and try to help. Mm -hmm. Uh, try to, don't try to hide it out and wait. Because what he wants to do is he wants to kill you or he wants to zone you. Right. So he's doing his job correctly right now where he's zoning you. And also in this case, he's kind of like staggering for time. Yeah, he's staggering for time. Um, and he's zoning out two characters right now. And giving them a lot mm. more percentage. You're gonna like I could anyways. have easily gone behind D.Va right there and gotten the hammer on uh, yep. Zen and yep. Cap. And I mean, it, would be, it might be a different scenario. Oh, you kind of wasted that as well. Um, if, um, if Kendall and, and, and Bean weren't dead, it might be a different scenario. Because if you're poking out here, Kendall, like, if you're right here poking, you can probably just kill him. Yeah, like, even if the team's playing all the way in, like, the courtyard, I don't 
as a pharmacy, I don't need to stay in the courtyard. I can just kind of walk wherever. Yeah. So, the, like, the one thing you're always doing wrong on these uh, on these points is that you're following the team too much. Yeah. That's fair. That was a great rotate by you, Sam. Great axe usage. Great knife so far. So good. Okay. Give you some natural yeah, cover. Thanks to Kendall on that one for getting me to get back to cover on that. Yeah. Great knife again. Oh, he rolled them from all them. Good move on the team. I don't know where she went. She, uh, like, flew into us, and I just hit her, like, again. off the edge. You're pretty good. You're good. You're good if you hit these knives. Actually, can you back up a few seconds to where the Cassidy rolls? Because I wonder, did I get him with a knife and forced him to roll into the wall? Okay, yeah, so, so he kind of rolled to the right. Yeah, he pressed he pressed his D key and tried to roll away from you. Yeah, so you see what you did there? You see right there? You, ha you, you, you used that ability without a purpose. And that's gonna fuck you. You can't mm -hmm. use that ability without a purpose. If you don't like have that ability- Like there I didn't really need to use you Rush, because yeah. you're already on point. Yep. And what I would say is if you want to use Rush... Um... Stop lagging about and get out of here. Do it, like, use it right now. Uh -huh. And run into them. Yeah. Because it's just those two, like It's that's... just those two, and you have two healers behind you. So you will not die. Mm-hmm. Because you need to take the point here. So you don't want them to do this contesting shit. Like where he just killed you. Now they're going to contest with, uh... With, um... TP. Make sure someone's killing the TP, hopefully. Okay, it's already dead. Yeah, but you see how you're kind of like... This is another thing as well. You see how you're kind of like jumping around? Here. I'll show you. That was good to rush it on the Kree. Kill him. Great. Oh yeah, I got kind of forgotten about that. Oh, you kind of lost track of him. Okay, that's fine. I thought you were just kind of like chilling. Like I didn't need to use that hammer earlier when he was jumping around because this thing put the got back down. Yeah. But so far, this is the best you've looked so far. You've looked very comfortable on the hero as well, so. The May pick. Okay. Cool. I like it. Oh no, I just wasn't having. No, I think this gives you a way more value. Um, okay, they, all right, Buster, I get strolled. Good rush, honestly. Go after the bat. I kill him. Ah, oh, that's a yeah. Focus fire is just not there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's almost over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was wrong target yeah. acquisition there. Like I could have Focus fire that. wasn't there. Um, they used Zen ult to get in, but I mean, you guys, if you guys are playing well, like look at all your ult charge. If you guys are playing together, you'll get five ults in like 15 seconds. So you can just use them all. Or you can, well, you're at 64, so you can just use two or three to try to win that. But that was your best map so far on this, on this, out of the three. So, mm -hmm. ended strong. And I think I think you got the hang of using the the knives a little bit. I mean, obviously you get a, the mechanics are better, but you know like what you how to use it. You're not just throwing it out randomly. You know how to use it. So, mm -hmm. looks pretty good. Looks pretty good from you. Um, but yeah, I think that's I think that's covers it. How long was that? Fifty three minutes. Wow. Uh, any any final questions before I stop the 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 uh. Stop the oh, recording. <laughs> no, I got nothing. I think, okay. um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely try to see if I can be less wasteful of those abilities, but more so on see if I can get better at the timing of them, especially with, with Junker trying to get more of once they get close enough just yep. to pop one or two out, but not yep. everything. Just think of like all the value you'll be getting once you start using your axe like more frequently when you use mm -hmm. the cooldown because you're getting more damage, you're getting more bleed, you're getting more healing, and you're getting more ult charge. All from just that one ability. It's so good. It's very mm -hmm. underrated. Alright. Okay.